All right, welcome YouTube. It's Defiant Scott here for Spycraft the Great Game Part 3 Let's Play. All right, so last time we learned about the Kennedy assassination tools that we were about to use. That mic sounds really quiet. Let's try that. All right. Here's a demo. This program the is view terrible. window displays the virtual camera's perspective. Okay. The blue area is the camera's range of sight. Zoom functions are available on both the camera and the 3D model. Use the zoom to isolate impact points and bullet holes. Connect bullet holes with the trajectory pointer. The Kennedy assassination tools will complete a trajectory. Draw a line. Isolate the origin point of the trajectory and locate the assassin. And note it's a guy from a Fisher Price village. File accessed. Dubansky assassination. Compartment level. Critic. So if you click history, it'll tell you about the Kennedy assassination tools and it's bullshit. If you click case file, it'll tell you about this. This is from Maxine Foster, who we're supposed to meet later uh, in regards to Birdsong. Telling Jamie Seaton that... Here's some info from the thing. Perfect. Building crime scene model. Red Square, Moscow. Local time, 11, 13 a.m. So this program's a really cool idea that doesn't work in this game at all. The idea is you take a series of videos and stills and create a 3D model of a place, and then you're able to track what happens within it but it's super limited and super awkward to work with. So the idea is one would zoom in and find bullet holes. And so one would find that spot. And then one would find somewhere else with bullet holes and draw a line between them. Doesn't really work. Also, bullet holes here and over there. These are actually, I believe, the ones you want. Draw a vague random line. I'm sure. Because it's impossible to actually line everything up the way you want. Okay, my line's a little bit off. This is the guy. Just, just go with me on this. This is the guy. Maybe if you did something, you could actually get this to show up as the guy. Look, it's now the guy. Perfect. Linking to Office of Information Resources. This also sucks. Um, again, cool idea. It is a facial sketch program. Mix and match system um, initialized. But downside is it sucks. So first of all, this stuff here, the hair, skin, eyes, whatever, we'll never use this. Never once in the game will any of this affect anything, so just ignore that. Second of all, based off of how bad these faces will end up looking, I can only imagine there's only about 20 people in this database. Okay, so we need to look this, make this dude look vaguely like this dude. I think it's this head, if I recall. Searching. Match found. Really? Because to my mind, this guy looks nothing like either of these guys, and these guys don't even look that much alike, but perfect. Phillips. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson Phillips, who we will soon learn his code name is Harmonica, which is awesome. Okay, he's got... Why is his marital status classified? Anyway, former operations officer, whereabouts unknown. Very interesting. Let's check his ops log. Now it Level thing. critic. Level critic. Access granted. Thank you. Compartment accessed. Rogue. All right, agency defector believed to be working 
four higher. That's not good. Nunelia Cesar, Harmonica, Iceman, and Scythe. As far as I know, Harmonica is his only real alias, but Iceman and Scythe, pretty awesome. Highly proficient in all manner of weapons, rifles, and guns, blah, blah, blah. Protégé of Milkovsky. That's interesting. So he was Milkovsky's protégé before Jeffries. Trademark attack is exploding musical instruments, such as the lethal harmonica used to behead so-and-so. That explains the nickname. Harmonica's deadly skills have never been used in the service of the CIA. Really? Sounds like they have, but anyway... He murders people. Good old assassination guy who left the CIA. Well, that's the guy. Opening email gateway. So the way this reporting system works is it's always multiple choice. You'll usually get a couple of multiple choice answers that are wrong at the start, such as Jean Murphy and Pierce MacDougall. And then what, as you find a additional people or places, whatever, they will show up in the list. So Thomas J. Armonica Phillips would not have been there if I hadn't already read his personnel file. Message sent. People respond to emails unbelievably fast in this game. Warhurst, what do you have to say? In the middle of a briefing with the Senate Intelligence Committee, blah, 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 an XCA man is alarming. Other assassins might miss an attempt on President Brooks, but Harmonica won't. He was Malkovsky's favorite. He has the knowledge and the skill. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. He's a bad guy. Harmonica's history. Saw your notes on Harmonica. He was the best damn weapons op I ever saw. Take These out a target with just... a rusty spoon if he had to. Amazing. A real perfectionist. He did the job you never get commendations for. If you catch my meaning. Oh, sure. Harmonica's one of the few who could have made that hit on Jeffries. You better watch your back. What job did you do to get all those fucking sweaters? Hey, Thorn. I'm on my way out. Need to brush up on my skills at the farm. Why? But I just want to say, excellent job on the cat. I zapped the harmonica stuff to Parker, Asai, and Lang. That ought to keep them busy. Unless you find him first. Of course, there's something else on your docket. Max Foster, who runs our Moscow station, just called me. She says the assassination scene is a zoo. They can't even find the bullet that killed Dubansky. I'm betting Harmonica used a stealth projectile, one that doesn't leave a trace. Also, not one witness reported hearing a shot. Even people in Dealey Plaza heard shots. Warhurst had me open a compartment called Pinpoint. It's all about stealth projectiles, and it's on the workstation in your office. Use the IA to figure out what kind of bullet was involved. Then we'll know which weapon Harmonica used. Good luck. Will do, David. First of all, any child could have figured out the person from the Kennedy assassination tools. Even if you try to use it the way it's meant to be used, welcome you know, to S and T. Like I did. There's only three people in the windows, and if I recall, only two of them have CIA files, and only one of them is clearly a rogue agent. So it's pretty simple. All right, this is clearance confirmed. Compartment pinpoint accessed by case officer Thorne. Hey, thank you. This is the pinpoint compartment. This tells us about uh, six different secret stealth weapons. Um, so we'll read about each one of them in the projectile they fire. And we'll find that only one of them meets the criteria. So we know two things. One, we know... <laughs> It left a shitload of bullet holes. And two, we know that it was silent and didn't leave anything behind. So let's see what fits. Here's the shotgun shell. That's that. Here we go. The Requiem shotgun. Range 50 meters. Well, already, I think it was further away than that. Buckshot is composed of calcium, which dissolves immediately. Prototype was developed by MI6. Okay, probably not that. Exploding projectile. S the Cypher 22. 
It's a 22 round and small and slow because it's low velocity. It enters the target and not exit. I don't know if it's guaranteed to, but sure. Magnesium and nitroglycerin flashes insulin violently upon contact with bodily fluid. Hey, it's silent. That meets a requirement. Uses compressed air instead of gunpowder, but the chemical reaction creates a low hum upon impact as the target burns from within. Well, that's really sketchy. Um, I don't think it's this, though, because note that this stays inside and causes the target to burn. Whatever the target, whatever the actual shooter used, Mr. Harmonica, left a bunch of bullet holes, so not that. Next. Liquid projectile. The cool hand. The cool hand is composed of frozen liquid nitrogen, which dissolves and evaporates in its odorless, colorless, gaseous state shortly after discharge. Blah, blah, blah. It's extremely loud. Perfect. It's not that. Need a, whoops. Let's click on the right thing here. Needle pack projectile. The pulse electric gun, also known as the PEG, contains liquid mercury, which generates an electric charge polarizing the mercury. The charged mercury is suspended in a solid state, forming the needle pack. This sounds kind of bullshit, but sure. The projectile is then forcibly ejected when its negative charge is blah, blah, blah. It's a silent kill weapon, and it has a bunch of needles. Okay. Well, that sounds like that actually might fit. Next, seven millimeter dissolving projectile. The China doll, named for its porcelain bullets. It's sleek and slippery enough to penetrate human flesh. However, it shatters. Bullet trajectories are difficult to determine. No, it's definitely not that thing. Also a seven millimeter, that is tiny. Nine millimeter. An offshoot of the Nucleus Molecular Construction Initiative. Blah, 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 molecular machinery to break up the mass of a bullet at a molecular level. I don't think it's that. Perfect. Well, I think that narrows it down pretty well. That would be the needle pack. Opening projectile. email gateway. Team, the bullet holes at the Dubansky assassination site reveal that a weapon fired a needle pack projectile. The assassination weapon was, who remembers? I hope you all set a pulse electric gun, because you're right. Message sent. Ooh, quick, quick, quick response yet again. Looks like Harmonica wasn't working alone in Red Square. I found this picture, which I had announced by some of my contacts at the NPIC. Wow, could you find a more stock picture of bad guys? Look at these dudes. Three dudes wearing mostly black leather. Hiding behind a van. Okay, mix and match, didn't find it, showed around in Russia. Sure, I can do that. Whoops. Video. Thorn, I saw your analysis of the video. Harmonica was one of our top paramilitary ops. He left the agency about two years ago. I don't know how the hell he got the peg. We better meet with Sterling. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound great, but sure. Let's go meet with... Whoops. Let's go meet with Sterling. Gene told me about Harmonica and the Peg. Things just keep getting worse. An ex-agency man uses an agency weapon to assassinate a Russian political figure? Even I wouldn't believe that we had nothing to do with it. Harmonica couldn't have stolen one of our pegs without help from the inside. It is one of our most secret programs. At this point, 
Tracking down that peg may be our best lead to harmonica. Somehow, the peg moved from a CIA facility out into the field. Well, let's find that peg, and let's find this harmonica. This is a goddamn political minefield. Oh, and don't forget about birdsong. I didn't forget about shit. Also, even if you already went to Moscow before then, I believe he still says don't forget about Birdsong. So... Case Officer Thorne. Fuck you, Warriors. Welcome to Interlink. More of all types of mail. Here's the lead from Maxine Foster, who we have not yet met. Photo, Jamie pulled from the Dubiansky assassination. She can't spell the word very. I get it. It's meant to be emphasis. Contact the SVR. The SVR is the, can't pronounce this, but it's basically part of the KGB. Um, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. They apparently work with the CIA sometimes on stuff. And it's like the less military KGB. Perfect. All right, Thorne. Jamie told me she called up a security model on the InfoScience company. We've been using these since the Aldridge Ames mess. People figured we should have known he was a bad apple because his work habits were irregular. So now everyone keeps tabs on everybody. Thorne, you've got to get to know these InfoSci people. They're the only four who had access to that weapon. That's security breaches don't just happen. You'll have links to phone taps, security camera photos, voice recognition, even elevator records. Hopefully our thief left some footprints. Or voice prints. Good luck. So that's bullshit. Um, Ames, who he referenced yet again, uh, was written up like five different times for being an alcoholic and for a number of other is issues. So we did know his work habits were irregular years before we realized he had been giving up CIA information. So I don't know what Holt's talking about, but fine. And now Seton, video message. It hasn't been that long since we completed the peg ourselves. And our intel puts us years ahead of anyone else in electric gun technology. Hell yeah. We built the whole thing in-house at the InfoSci facility. There wasn't even outsourcing for components. I put up a link to the security database for InfoSci. Check it out. Maybe the thief left us a clue. That was some weird camera work at the end there, Jamie, but thank you. Okay, so this will be the last thing I'll do in this video. Is... Run through Eclipse. It's not called Eclipse. That's something different, apparently. That we'll get to later. Whatever this security model is called. The security model tool. Sure. Benton. Lieutenant Warren T. Cohen. Dr. Darren M. Magruder. Dr. Kate. Sung, Dr. Lee Tay. All right. So Security are... model online. To display suspicious activity, click a subject's icon. So those are our four potential targets. Those are the four people who could have checked out the Pulse electric gun. And we Benton, use the security model. Lieutenant Warren T. For to personal enter. information, okay. click the folder icon. Other icons display surveillance data. Okay, so this will show us various irregular things that they've done, as well as some info on them. So, Lieutenant Warren Timothy Benton is the security director. He's married. He's got two kids. He's in the People's Militia of Maryland. That sounds suspicious. His alias apparently is Condor, which is, again, awesome, as are all aliases in this. I uh, did some stuff with the Mujahideen. Perfect. And some other stuff. 
All right, he may have had PTSD because he was a prisoner of war in Afghanistan when he was training Mujahideen fighters against the Soviets, which ended up biting us in the ass, but that's neither here nor there. Perfect. Case officer. Th that is not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay, ready to Calls from unknown activity. locations have been recorded. Locate point of origin and analyze source audio. Will do. Searching. Okay, Dr. Frank M. Rendell. Let's hear it. Frank! Florida Lieutenant Benton. I work for Dr. Rendell. Okay, who answers the phone? Frank! Frank! Okay, go. Okay, go on. White dress and funny sneakers, right? <laughs> That's right, sir. We all wear them. What can I do you for? Somebody's been avoiding their annual physical. Okay, okay, you got me. When are we doing this? How's Monday at 11? I'll have to double check with Marie, but pencil me in. How's that sound? Perfect. I'll see you there. Okay. First of all, this dude's an asshole. Second of all, we could theoretically go through and try to analyze the voice prints to try to find if that lady was an enemy agent or something, but she wasn't, and this conversation would be a pain in the ass to do it on, so we're not gonna. Moving on. Irregular elevator use. Irregular elevator use has been documented. Yes. Okay. Laboratory access recorded. Removal of info science components has also been documented. Okay, so around that same time he checked out the peg and the site for it. Interesting. Warren Benton, the Falcon here is the Falconer. Let's hear his voice ID on that day. Warren Benton, the Falcon here is the Falconer. That's him. I'm not checking it. It's, it's him. Off-hours building access has been documented. The surveillance is available for analysis. I'm not doing this either. That's, that's him. Perfect. Still him. Searching. Mercy Hospital. Let's hear. Hello, Frank. How are you? No small talk. Give me the word. The results are not exactly what we'd hoped. Shit. Listen, treatment's come a long way. There's a lot we can do. We may have caught it in the early stages. This is what I get for working out three times a week. Warren, you're gonna have to work with me on this, buddy. You, Mary Beth, and the boys. Just let me work it out. Fair enough. But I want to see you here tomorrow morning. Have your secretary schedule it with mine. Okay, so apparently Warren got some bad health news out of that physical. Again, I could check that for voice prints, but I'm not going to. Searching. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Public telephone at the Kansas City Municipal Airport. It's a little bit sketchy. Pete! Hey, man. Who's picking me up at the airport? Who do you think? My secretary. <laughs> yeah, right. I want curbside service. You copying, Lieutenant? What's that? You okay, man? Great. Why wouldn't I be? Nothing. You just sound a little off. Let's just say I'm having an off day. How about yourself? Not good, man. But I'll get through it. Be in that bottle. Come on now, Pete. It's a tough wagon to stay on, man. But I'm gonna make it work this time. Fair enough. See you soon, buddy. Gate 53, I'm there, pal. Okay, so he's picking up an alcoholic, I guess. It's kind of strange. I've never... I know alcoholics, and none of them say I'm gonna get through with that bottle. But, sure, okay. Okay, he checked out a gun and the thing... Warren Benton, the Falcon here is the Falconer. Someone was laughing creepily in the background, but that was in fact him. And we're moving. Another phone call. Searching.
from the racetrack. This is Benton. Warren, buddy! Where you been? Bobby, you maggot! I told you to never call me. I know, I know, but, you know, Dominic was kind of worried about you, and, uh, yeah, ever since the numbers didn't work out... Look, I have the money. All of it? Yes. Let's meet. Yeah, at the track! Why not? I know the way. Now, goodbye. Okay, so he owes some money to a bookie at the racetrack. So he left then, I guess, or came back then or something, but that's him. And he used an elevator at a weird time. Okay, well, that's, that's fine, I guess. I don't think that's especially suspicious. We will leave off there for now. We will come back for Doctors Cohen, Magruder, and Sung. No, I have no results to report as of yet. All right, we're gonna save our game here. Come back for the rest of that exciting detective action next episode. Thanks all for watching. This is Stefan, I am Scott. Can't close, there we go. Alright, you have a good one. Cheers.